Hey guys, welcome. My name's Denise. And I'm Lindsay, and uh, we're born this gay. Welcome, welcome. This is a podcast slash YouTube channel where we're just going to create a space, talk about everything lesbian, um, any questions you guys have, we're willing to answer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're honestly just trying to make this a safe space for you guys. We're going to be open with y'all. We want y'all to be open with us. Um, we're here for you guys. If y'all have any questions, need any answers, that's what we're here for, y'all. All right, so this today's episode, our very first episode, uh, is basically going to be about how we met, how we became to be a lesbian, and then also how we came out, and how hopefully maybe give you a couple pointers on how you could come out as well. Right, right. So um, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, jump right into it, guys. We hope y'all stick around. And if you like, go ahead and like, uh, comment, and subscribe down below. And we'll be posting videos every Thursday from here on out. But let's jump on into it. So um, Denise, I'd say we met, what, almost five years ago at this point? It's like four, four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, so we now. met in the uh, service industry, actually. Yeah. And uh, I remember the first time I saw you. And um, I had just come back after quitting this job. I decided to um, come back and work again. And I remember looking down the the um, restaurant, and I saw this uh, girl walking through. She had some khaki pants on and a big old chain around her hip. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Hey, I, like I have song. been gone for five months, and they replaced me. They replaced the butch. Oh. I just, <laughs> wow, so... You know, from then on then, we just... I mean, I feel like I out-butched you a little bit, in all fairness. Well, I mean, you, you, you... You wore the khaki shorts, I refused, I mean, I had my big chain, I love my chain. My I'm name. not trying to, like, put you <laughs> put you out there or anything, but you got a couple years on me. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. Oh, so, oh, she mentioned the age. No, ah, it's, it's all right. First episode, like I said, <laughs> we're getting everything out there. Okay. Yeah, so that was probably about four and a half years ago now, or give or take a few months, um... And ever since then, we've been uh, friends, and uh, we go we go camping together, we work out together, we uh, party together, to say the least, and uh, yeah, we really just have a, a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys have ever worked in the service industry, but... Um, yeah, no, shout out to my fellow bartenders, right. my fellow servers, <laughs> I got you, I, I've been in those, uh, I've been in those weeds, I understand, so hey, I mean, that's how a yeah. lot of our, I would say a lot of us gays, we get by. Oh, yeah, um, just mental stimulation, <laughs> just busy, 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 honestly. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, but then y'all, if you do work in the service industry, you know that bond you create with the servers that you work with when you're deep down in the trenches and you're just pushing through it, grinding, and you have someone who has your back or runs your drinks for you, maybe takes out your food, you know, like, that's oh. where that's where we got to, yeah. and five years later, here we are, so. Uh, I, I have vivid memories of, of watching you cuss out a, a, a POS screen. Like, yep, I've, yep. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, and then you would steam walk back to the kitchen and yell at the food food runners about something and <laughs> your one job is to put the food on the plate and just and take it, take it to, to my the table, table. That's all yeah. you got to do that's like, it that's, oh that's, that's okay. good yeah, that's no, good I mean, all right. <laughs> but yeah so ever Salty since nervous. then we've been friends and you know uh we got to know each other a little bit better after that you know um just all the different stories about how we grew up and how we came out and the different struggles that we faced. So we wanted to go ahead and share that with you guys. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the point of this uh, channel is basically to um, share like like minded people for us to come together and and really have have, have a space to to say your your stories, because I know you, you've had some heartaches or some hardships. Cause, <sighs> Haven't we all? Yeah, yeah. Haven't we all? Yeah, so um, our first question that we are going to answer today is um, how we became to be lesbians, like how we just came to that realization. Uh, Denise, when did you first know that you were different, just like the normal, I guess normal, what we say nowadays, but uh, just different than everybody else? Uh, all right, so... I knew I was different really early. I I knew probably around four or five years old 
Um, oh, wow. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, no, that, no, that is early. It, very early. Uh, I started getting feelings for my classmates. They were just tiny little school girl crushes. Don't and get we're me talking wrong. like kindergarten age. Kindergarten, yeah. Wow. yeah no, don't get me wrong. It started early for me in all ages. I also liked, uh, I, I, I used to get married with this little little boy in daycare, so mm. three or four years old. So things for me started early. Okay, um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it always. Yes, yes, little veils. <laughs> Five years old, I already knew I was different. I already knew uh, I liked girls, had a schoolgirl crush with someone. I used to kiss her on the cheek, and then I remember coming home, telling my mother, hey, I've kissed this girl on the cheek, and my mother obviously corrected me. She, us being from the South and us being from where we're from, um, she's like, no, not going to not not, allow that's that. Not okay. It's not appropriate, right, not right. something you can do. Um, so obviously at that point I knew that was something that's not normal. Um, so... Grew well, up a little bit normal later. with parentheses around yes, it. Yes, yes, right. yes, of course. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, a couple of years later, I got my real first crush. And, uh, yeah, that's that was still eight, nine years old. Um, wow. Yeah. Really, really into this girl for like eight or nine, or not eight or nine years, but one or two years, which for an eight or nine-year-old is right. a really long time. Right, um, yeah. I mean, we're know, still talking it, elementary school. Yeah, multiple grades. Like, right. Who, that that's that's a that's almost marriage, wow. but uh, yeah. <laughs> At I, that time, yeah. <laughs> but I, I again, lo- uh, I was in love from afar. She didn't know I right. existed. Like we never really interacted or anything like that. Yeah. Fast forward now, she's literally my best friend. But I mean, that's you know again twenty that's years crazy. later. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you dead. started off having a crush on her and <clears throat> huge. Yeah. Now she's actually going to be in your wedding. Like oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. One of the main people in your wedding, oh, aside man. from your wife. Life, of course. If I were to travel back in time and tell my like eight year old self that the girl in the green sweater is gonna be my best man in my wedding, I I would have yeah that my eight year old self would have probably told my 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 bigger self to get out, <laughs> leave. What, yeah, what is not happening. No. <laughs> funny, but, uh, funny. So yeah, yeah, you came to realize that at a very very early age. Extremely, extremely. Yeah. yeah. So what about you? When did you start noticing that you liked girls or you know you were different? When did that happen? I think the first time I was consciously aware of it was in middle school, actually. Um, I uh, had this friend, and sh- uh, she would always talk about, uh, you know, like, hey, who would who would you date if you were lesbian? And I just was like, I never really understood the question, but I just played along with it. I was like, oh, you know, I would date yada, 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 whoever, whoever this person was at the time. And they were like, oh, you know what, I would actually date you and I think like it just it hit me I was like wow like I could actually like I'm actually attracted to someone (laughs) of my own gender like it it, like I this is a thing and like growing up I was always like put out as different just with like the clothes that I wore um I was always wearing basketball shorts and t-shirts and hoodies and I just never fit in with the normal like we say and my, I remember my dad would take me to Kohl's and he would make me buy, um, like, blouses or um, little capris, like, a whole bunch of girly of stuff. Course, and, yeah. like, yeah. I just, I never, I never so felt wait, comfortable wait. in it. What about the men's clothes? Was it because it was loose? Was it because you just, I've always you know, been, a, I've always been a fan that. of looser clothing. Okay. Right. That is true. Yeah. Like, even, like, with pants as well, like, jeans. And I've never been a fan of skinny jeans, even though I in a sense, force myself to wear them throughout yeah. high school. Of course, never, I've never been a fan of tight clothing in general. So I always wear loose, baggy things, and that just was apparently different than everyone else around me. So I think I noticed that, and then it became a, con- a constant thought in my mind after middle school all the way through high school, where I was like, no, this, this isn't okay, you know, like I don't need to be this way. I don't have, I can't be this way just because, you know, like you said, growing up in the South, just the way that we, things are down here and just the religious and everything. And so I think in high school that I really just kept it to myself for a while. So I just, I'd say consciously aware middle school, but in denial throughout high school. Okay. Okay. That makes it. So now looking back, like, um, do you, I mean, do you, did you have you always been gay and you just didn't know until a certain inflection point? Or do you think that was like a transition, something that kind of happened? I fully believe looking back on it that I was 
always gay. Always, okay. Like okay, like we yeah. named the podcast Born This Gay. Okay, okay. okay I that makes fully sense. I fully believe that I was just growing up and like looking back on everything and then I just couldn't understand why I couldn't keep a boyfriend for more than three months. I just was uncomfortable spending time with them. I didn't want to get close to them. I kept myself from kissing anybody until I was eighteen years old because I didn't want to kiss a guy. Like and I just never that thought never came to me. And so my first kiss when I was 18 and I kissed a guy and I was like, um, that wasn't, mm, that didn't, that feel, did, that right. didn't feel right. <laughs> so then a couple months later, I kissed a girl and I just sparks everywhere. And I was like, wow, wow. So I think when I was 18 years old, it like I fully accepted it, but I knew for years. Beautiful. I knew for years. All right. Yeah. Yeah. See, audience, if if you if you kiss a guy and he and it just doesn't, it's not okay. It just you in your soul, you, you feel just, it. Like you, you really do feel you're it. You're not alone. I promise. <laughs> I feel you. I it's you. okay. We're we're here yeah. with we're here with you. <laughs> we understand. So, I promise you, we do. So speaking of kisses, when when did your first girl kiss happen? That was that was shortly after my first kiss with a guy. Okay, so I, right. I want age, I want location. Love I, age I want, and location, yeah. wow. <laughs> so that's an interesting one there. So I had, was at a, um, uh, I guess you can call it like a camping party in a sense. Like we were having a whole cookout. It was a whole bunch of people, like 30 different people like 30 different campsites so like a like a out retreat like a girl scout trip no like but a, it was um it was um something oh uh, an old co-worker hosted it and it was a fundraiser for their nonprofit. Group. okay 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 yeah so it was like a cookout kind of deal but it was like a weekend long where like you know everyone camped we drank we you know we partied and it's yeah and so I sounds very lesbian. Okay, <laughs> right. But at the time, you know, <laughs> at the time I was straight, right? Yeah. You know, I was so in denial. I was so in denial, but I was really close with my uh, best friend at the time. And she at that campsite, she made a move on me, and went from my first kiss to honestly losing my virginity. Oh shit! My first kiss with a girl, yeah. So it was it was very quick for me, just because like. And I'm not saying by any means, like, you take your time when you want to proceed to intimacy with somebody. But for me, it felt so natural, so right. Like, I've never wanted to do anything more than just hold hands with a guy. But the second I kissed a girl, I was just so myself, so at ease. Did you just feel like the electricity natural. It was like, go through the shocking. body? Shocking. It was, like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Understood. it just was, it just came to, like, it just hit me, like, fire. Like, you know, what you've been pretending to be isn't you. And, and it, you had you had kissed a guy before. Right, right. right. So right. I had kissed had a guy a beforehand. So I, I yeah. did have the okay. comparison, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that was, that was my first experience with a girl and... Like, looking back on it, like, it, it set in motion everything that my, like, life has come to now. And I, you know, all it's led up to, I, I'm happy. And I haven't, hey. I haven't been this happy my entire life. Like, I finally feel me. So. I was about to say, I've, I've enjoyed, you know, obviously it's only been four or five years that we've known each other. But right. I've enjoyed a little bit of transition. I've seen you, like, just, right. you know, for reference, everybody. I knew her when she had actual long hair. Right. Oh yeah, so now it's the, it's hey, full I got the shaved cut. cut. Oh, I I no. gotta get it trimmed, but <laughs> oh yeah, but, no, no, yeah. No, I no, had no, hair no. almost down to my butt. Yeah, when you first met me, sure did. Well, I wore long. the short, short shorts. You know, you can see my thighs. Like it was a whole lot. Now I don't wear shorts, like three inches above my knees. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Yeah. No, no one sees my thighs. Hey. Ever. Understood. Understood. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So it is. It is funny the transition, but um. Back to the question. Um, when was your first kiss, Denise? Oh, man. First, all right. So first girl kiss. 
Uh, well, first kiss in general was 13. I did my little guy thing, you know. He pushed me against the wall. It was very sloppy, very gross. But it, oh, it look was, at that you know, movie scene just, that you had. Oh, first horrible. kiss, wow. Yeah. Oh, Outside man. of the so orchestra awkward. room. So yeah. awkward. <laughs> In the school. So awkward. It's so good. Yes. It's so good. <laughs> oh, but we've, we've all, all been, been there. That straight we've all gay been there. doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, you know that first awkward kiss is gross. It's so bad. Um, it's so bad. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, um, yeah. So my first girl kiss happened uh, when I was a junior. Um, she was a sophomore. She was a sophomore who was good enough to be put on varsity. I was still on the junior varsity level, you know, because I'm right. I enjoy basketball, but I am not good at it at all. But that's to be okay. Honest, can't I love relate. It. Yeah. You can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, you can suck it for that. Com- it's fine. It's fine. You know, <laughs> no, we, not all of us can be bench warmers. I will say I was very skilled at my bench warming job. You know, yeah. every team needs one. Just, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you kept the bench warm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had a decent shot. I'm just, I'm short. I'm a very short person. Ah, see, I can't relate to I'm that either. I'm stocky, so I'm not fast. <laughs> so I was a short post. So obviously I was just y- set up yeah, for failure. Yeah, right, Always, right. You can't, know, mm. I'm just not a basketball person. All right, person, all right. Whatever. I, I okay. understand. I got understand. you in horse. Let's go. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, yeah, so, so yeah, she made varsity. Yeah, she made varsity. Uh, I was junior varsity. So either way, we we interacted a lot. Um, and then she was uh, she was a good girl, um, nerd, just you know, very a little bit think thinking differently. So everything that attracts me, there. Right. Um. So anyway, uh, we're we we have been having this tension. For a couple months now, obviously. Other people can see it, but we can't really see it. Okay, because um, you're too, tenches, too close yes, to the situation. Yes. I, yeah. um, on the bus rides, away games, or, you know, even mm. coming back from away games. Were y'all games, bus buddies? Was, we were bus buddies. Oh, oh yes, seats, you you know? yes, got, you were. You know? Yes, you were. You know, right? And then, you know, eventually, you know, the... The, the shoulder touch became, mm-hmm. you know, leaning on and then sleeping on. Mm-hmm. And then, the head just, rest. Of course, of, of course. Yes, yes. So fast forward to just one day in the locker room. Both of our parents are late um, picking us up. And uh, the the uh, entire basketball team at, one, at some point gets picked up. So we're alone. We're alone in the locker just, room. Okay. Very cliche. You know, and then in the bench lock, happened. In the I don't basketball know. locker room. Yes, of course, of course. That's of how, course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at some point, I forgot how it happened. I think I was trying to be suave, not being very good at it. And I ended up sitting on her and then kissing her neck and then going for the mouth. And I remember when our lips touched, first thought in my head was, well, I'm a lesbian. That was it. That's it. Yeah, this I is th- it. We're I here. think that you starting off with kissing her on the neck first should have just gave it away immediately. Oh, um, yeah, you're right. Right you're there, right, right then and there. Who, before the first kiss. Like, that's amazing. Like, props. I was always told you need foreplay, you know. That's just how, you know, right? That's <laughs> Even before the first kiss. That's amazing. Uh, but, yeah, so that's that's my first kiss. That's how it started. Basketball locker room. I was 16 years old, probably. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So, um, mm. from my experience mm. and from most of the, um, the uh, lesbians that I know, um, you tend to have your first kiss with a girl. You tend to have your first lesbian moment before you are out to your parents. Oh, yeah. Or even to your friends or family. Um, so our next question for today is, how did you come out? How did you come out, Denise? How did I come out? Uh, wow. Or so, I guess we'll start with, who did you come out to first? Oh, I mean, that was one's the first easy. person that you came oh, out yeah, to. You know, and what age were you? Very easy. I was, so I had my first kiss probably 16 okay. uh, with a girl. And then I want to say probably a year and a half, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years later. I had, I had already gotten my first job. I already had a car. Um, I, I was still living at home with my parents, obviously, because I was not an adult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right. I had a lot of freedom. So it was one of them, my best friend, again, my first crush, but my best friend at this 
moment of my life and going forward she had she spent the night as she always does every every weekend and uh every weekend yeah so she yeah no she was over every just like she was every weekend and we uh we were in bed together and i just decided to hey i need to tell you something she was like what um reluctantly we're about to go to sleep and i was like just so you know i like girls i'm gay and she just looked at me and she she's like really and i'm like yeah and she's like okay that's fine you know just very simple like right you know i've always i think her exact words were i've always wanted a gay friend she meant gay guy because for some reason i have no idea why but straight girls they just <laughs> always want they a want a gay, gay guy, guy friend. friend but hey I, she yeah. got me so it's fine i'm i'm gay and i act like you know i dress like a guy so hey right hey I, you you didn't specify <laughs> you didn't specify there were no specific instructions but uh yeah so i told her she reacted great i knew it wasn't going to be that big of a deal i was still afraid for my life um, but, right, of course. Yeah, yeah no, very first I mean, person. even just saying the words. Oh, yeah, no. I the, am gay. I like girls. For all of you who like the word lesbian, the word butch, the word gay, any of that we're saying it out loud or just in your mouth, it just doesn't feel right. That's okay. I, that was me too. Like, I... I, I didn't like to say the word it, it lesbian. Feels it feels uncomfortable. Yeah, extremely yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, no, cause... like, we, we went through that, too. It's yeah. it's that fear that sets inside of you, like, I'm not going to be accepted mm-hmm. if I say these words, yeah. if I say this is what I am, because for some reason, that's not okay in a lot of people's eyes, and in yeah. the way I see it, love Especially is love. Especially if you're so. yeah, if traditional households, if you're here from the South, if... Uh, you're in any type of religious, you know, um, uh, environment. All those, you know, those those words those have a are, big play on it. Yeah, yeah. taboo. Yeah, no, so, for sure. No, don't ever feel ashamed for those words, because yeah, I I remember that feeling uncomfortable in my mouth to say just the word lesbian, even when I was being a lesbian. Right, right, right. So, right. <laughs> um, so yeah. that was it. Was hard just coming out to your best friend. You've mm-hmm. known you've known her f- since elementary school. Yeah. And yeah. those words felt like vomit coming out of your mouth. Oh, very much so. Very much so. How really did you tell do. your parents? <sighs> so, parents. Parents was a whole different nightmare. Right. Um, it started off that's okay, exactly though. how to describe so, it. So, I was already outside of the house. I had lived on my own. I remember, like, being nine years old and just, because, I, again, I've always known I was gay. I knew that at five. Um, but I remember asking, throwing my brother under the bus and being like, hey, what would you do if my brother was, you know, if he was gay? <laughs> and then she I was him, not me. Yeah, yeah, him. not me, not me. Him. If he was gay, how? What? What would right. be wrong, mom? And she was like, "Oh, he would. He would not live in my house. That's not acceptable. It's not okay." So at oh, that point, yeah. I knew in order for me to come out or tell her or be any type of transparent, right? I had to do it. After I moved out, like it had to be something. Where so I was at least, of the at house. the very least, out of high school yeah. or out, well, after it, you graduated. Exactly, exactly. So, throughout entire uh, high school, I was uh, in the closet. At least to my parents, I came out. I came out to my best friend probably mid semester. So I had that whole other, uh, you know, semester that I was just in the closet at home, and that was the only place I was. Mid semester, junior year, or senior year. Senior year. So Senior year. it was like, okay. it had to be December, January around that time. Because okay. I remember I only had six months, and then we were good. We were clear. Like, I told my girlfriend at the time, I was like, we can, I can come out. So you, you were dating somebody yes. at this whole time? Yes. Yeah, no, my okay. my whole junior, senior, not whole junior, senior year, but my main, most of my junior, senior year, right. I was dating someone. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so I knew I had to move out first, so I did. I moved out at 18. Um, right after I graduated high school, I moved in with two guys. I was supposed to move in with my best friend, but her mother would not allow her. So, you know, that's how life goes. Right, so, um, right. But anyway, all right, so yeah, no, I had moved out. I was 18 years old. Um, I had moved in with two boys, which she wasn't happy with at the time because right. obviously she knew I was, she thought I was straight. Thought you were right? straight. Yeah, so you moved um, in with two boys. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, no, that's that's bold. That's, right, right. Denise, you're going to get taken advantage of, right? <laughs> You know, every mother's fear. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> little did she know. Little did she know um, that I would be teaching them a thing or two. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> good one. That's but, a good one. But anyway, um, moved out with two boys. 
Um, and just ironically, I find this girl at the local IHOP that we, you know, was down the street from my job. Right. That we frequent that because we were broke college kids. I mean, IHOP right? is, yeah, yeah. is good. I'm not yeah, trashing yeah. it, man. Ironically, um, my roommate said actually tried to um, get her number before, and she, she looked at me, and she'd rather have mine. So it was a nice one win from me. Yeah, right. Thank you, thank you. But, uh, yeah, so we had gone out on a date. We were at the mall. We, uh, she took me shopping for her. Th- she had a three-year-old, so she took me shopping for her, uh, the rain boots. She, she wanted to get her three-year-old rain boots. And I got to say it was one of the best um, dates of my life because before this, I had been closeted. I had been in the, you know, completely, sh- we, we didn't go, if we were in public, we didn't hold hands, we didn't right. show affection, we were, you know, very much. It was just, you were was, just two yeah, friends. Exactly, exactly. Somewhere. So it was never, you know, um, a point to where I could, you know, be myself. However, with this date, she she grabbed my hand. She was very affectionate. You know, she gave me kisses on the cheek. Like, there were things that, you know, everything had just clicked. I was like, okay, we're, no one's shooting at us. Right. Like, like is it? the world is not <laughs> ending. I don't see any pitchforks. Nothing's on fire. <laughs> right. Like, you know, this everything feels is great. Everything is okay. Yeah, yeah, right. This is amazing. So, yeah, and I walked away from that date just... And with complete peace, um, I really enjoyed it. I felt more like myself. I was like, this is how it's supposed to be. Right, right. Well, unfortunately, um, I had gotten a call probably uh, maybe four or five hours after that date uh, from my best friend who was panicking, you know. Very, and it's very rare that she panics. She's pretty pretty chill. Pretty level-headed. Yes, exactly. And uh, she was like, hey, my mom just called me. Apparently she saw you at the mall with some girl holding hands. Um, and she keeps asking me if you're gay, right? Wow. So okay. immediately I'm just scared. <laughs> <laughs> like heart, no, heart's yeah. pumping, yeah. like, oh, in no. My, in my throat, have no idea what's going on. And, uh, yeah, so at that point I knew, I was like, okay, either, because obviously being my best friend, our mothers know each other. We've known each other for 10 years at this years. point. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Our mothers know each other. I know that the next call she's going to make, if she doesn't get answers from my best friend, it's going to be my mother. For your right. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, well, I guess tonight's the night. So um, I scheduled a uh, uh, just a quick, you know, like, Mom, are you going to be home? Okay, I'm going to come over. We're going to have dinner or whatever. Um, and we have dinner and then sit at the table and just the conversation goes. I can't tell you what it was about. I do remember that it was, uh, it was just the tension in my, like, I was nervous. Just building she, up with yeah. anxiety. She could, the yeah. Time. Uh, it, yeah, no, exactly. you're, you're just having a normal conversation, if anything, trying to ease your tensions. But if it's just building up the entire time, you're building up to the moment, and eventually it just falls out like word vomit. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was, uh, we were talking about something, and then I, I just remember saying something to the point like, All right, mom, well, I gotta tell you something, and you're not gonna like it. I just want you to know. And it just came out, I'm gay. Right. right. Um, Did you say, like, those exact words, I'm gay? I'm, I'm gay. I like girls. Right. right. Okay. And at first, you know, you could tell it just didn't hit until, you know, it went over. My father immediately, who's just like, oh, I knew. Oh, the whole sorry, time. No surprise. <laughs> yeah, no. That's, that's my, well, in all fairness, my father knows everything. That's just that's how, fair. He's better than right. Google, apparently, in, or at least in his <laughs> mind. Um, but, yeah, no, my mother, um, yeah, just over her head, she uh, initially was supportive. She tried to be um, very just neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, it's not what I would want for you, but, you know, I accept it. I'm okay with right. it. It's fine um, type thing. And I remember just walking away, and I was just like, this is amazing. I came out. Right, and the relieved. world didn't end. Your you parents know, still love exactly. you. Like that's My shoulders, right. they can breathe. That's like, just a thousand here. pounds. Yes. Lift it off. Amazing. Just to say those Three words. I am gay. Yeah. I like girls. Just blows your mind. (sighs) But yeah, so a day or two passed, and then I got the call. Mm. And then it had sunk in. My mother had felt it, you know, and then that's when she called me, and she was just all tears all through the phone. All I could, um, all, all I remember hearing was just crying, and her basically 
blaming herself like she you know she always taught all of her girls and even her boy to be strong independent people and to never need anyone you don't need a man exactly right. exactly you don't need a man and her words at that point were like i didn't mean literally like I, <laughs> <laughs> like you know that's that's not what i meant but right. you don't need a man um she so she blamed herself she you know just like this is my fault and so now i am trying to console my mother you know telling me that the way she raised me is not a bad thing, like right. it's you know, it's it's okay, and like it it's had nobody's nothing, fault. Exactly, it's it had nobody's nothing fault. to do with how she yeah. raised me. I'm just, I've always been gay, you know. It's, it's just, just me. How it's it is, who I yeah. am. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was heartbreaking, and so we fell out of we fell out of touch for a while. I wasn't allowed to see my, and I was messing up in other areas. I was messing up in school. It was my first year away at college. I was flunking. Like it was just there was a whole bunch of mess. Right. You know, I was partying right. a lot. I had just discovered alcohol. Like there was there was there was a there lot was a lot going more going on, on. than um, yeah yeah I rebelled I definitely rebelled so um, but we're okay now we're everything is happy now I will say um, she very much accepts my I'm engaged so she accepts my fiance um, right. she loves her my father is in love with my fiance <laughs> I think he loves my fiance more than he loves that's me. that's amazing like it's that's just amazing very yeah we're very we're, we're very different um, environment than it was. 10, 15 years. I came out at, I came out at 18, 14 years ago. Wow. So y'all do the math. Y'all can see how old I am. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, same, same question. How, how did you come out of the closet? How did your parents find out? Wow. So, like I said, I was, I was in the closet, heavily in the closet, even to myself, all the way up until my first time with the girl. And, for I think for six months it was just her that knew like and I was even still kind of in denial like I even um ended up getting in a relationship with a boy and um I just it still didn't feel right but at the same time I was like this isn't this isn't who I'm supposed to be like I'm this isn't how I was raised something's wrong like I just need to fix it but then it just still didn't feel right and I was like why am I making myself miserable like why why am I doing this and so I went back and I I started dating this girl and like my whole world just lit up oh oh like I just this was this was it like this wow like the realization that I'm happy being a lesbian. I'm happy being with a girl. I'm happy being me. So I gotta ask, when did you start having relationships in general? Like, was it like, boys, girls? Didn't matter. Like, what was the age? <laughs> well, I don't know if you can count. Like, I had a a boyfriend in kindergarten, kindergarten through third grade. Okay. Okay. Um, funny enough, his mom. Love. Yeah, his mom used to call me. Um, I was his uh, Jenny to for to his forest. Jenny to his forest. Oh, okay. The click. Forrest Gump blah, movie. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, don't blame me. Come on, <laughs> what? Jenny to his forest. Hey, and I age. mean, I mean, come I'm, on. I'm... I even knew that one. <laughs> I even knew that one. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, I had, you know, I had the boyfriend in elementary school. Went through all of that, and then I had random like three months, two months, just random like just unimportant relationships with different guys, like. So where we hold, we held hands in the hallways. That was it. There was Cute. nothing. Yeah, Cute. right. That no, was it. I mean, also work the work. Right. So relationship in a sense. Cute. But uh, like I said, first kiss was first kiss in general with anybody was when I was eighteen years old, and that was with a guy. But then months after it was with a girl. And then so you know after I'm I'm with this girl for, I think we had it had been about six months now. And she happened to be living with me at the time because her living situation fell through. So, and I was still living with my parents. And so she moved in with me and my parents. And um, I remember she ordered a book to the house. And the book said, it had something about girls on the cover of it. I don't remember what the title was. But I remember my mom opening the package and looking at it. And she confronted me. And she was like, hey, is this yours? And I was like uh no no of no course not. that's actually no, that's actually hers like uh, that's i have no idea what that is uh, in, in fact and she was like 
is she is she pressuring you to to be gay like is she is she putting something on you and it just i was like uh no no like we're we're just friends like everything's platonic we're just normal like you know it's okay everything's good don't worry mom and i think it had to been oh man like maybe weeks weeks no more after that um we were in my room and we were kissing on the bed and my youngest sister who never knocks by the way oh Youngest, uh, youngest old, old sister at this point. Like, was she like four? Is she? No, is she no, no. 12? At this age, at this, she's probably twelve. Twelve. Okay. She's probably twelve. Ooh, ooh. Still. And she just okay. barges into the room, <gasps> and we just stopped. Like deer in the headlights, turned and looked at her, <laughs> and she just looked back at us, stepped back, closed the door, and I heard her run downstairs. And I opened the door to listen to what she was going to say. And she said, Lindsay was kissing so-and-so. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like, the, my whole world around me just came crashing down. Oh, damn. So I was like, my parents, they know. They know something is at least going on between me and her. And so I think I, I, think I avoided it for a couple of weeks. And then I was also going through... Um, I don't know if anyone out there struggles from mental health issues, but I was going through kind of like a mental breakdown my senior year of high school. So I I ran away from home and I moved in with the girl that I was with at the time. And I kind of, I just, you know, dropped out of school and I spent my whole time focused on her. I was obsessed with her. And so I just kind of avoided my parents for a couple months. Didn't say anything to them. I just kind of left because I was... I don't know if I was ashamed or if I was embarrassed or what it was, but I just couldn't say the words to them myself and I didn't want them talking to me about it. So I kind of just left. And I think after a while I was like, you know what, Lindsay, like that's your family. Like just at least give them a chance. Just talk to them. So I had, I had dinner with my, my mom and my dad and they were just kind of talking to me about it. And I was just like, yeah, you know, like me and her have been dating for a little less than a year now and it's a thing like I think I've known for a while and I I can't say that the words I'm gay ever came out of my mouth oh wow yeah so you just danced around that I issue. danced around it I I admitted okay. I had a girlfriend I admitted that I liked hey, girls I mean at that point though they already knew so they already knew to, right got, yeah, right but if that if that tells you guys how hard it is to say those yeah. words really? I am gay I couldn't even say them myself. And to this day, my mom loves me so much for the person I am. And I want to give my dad all the credit because where he came from or where he comes from, his hometown is very, he grew up very Catholic and very against uh, same-sex relationships. Very much so. And in the, the, what, four years, five years that I've been out now, the progress that I've seen him make, uh, like to the point where this Christmas, my uh, my girlfriend joined my family for Christmas on my dad's side, and my dad bought her a gift. Oh, big! He got things. her a gift. Wow! It just blew my mind Good the Good the stuff. the way he accepted her. So even though those words never came out of my mouth, my family still understood what I was trying to say, and they still accepted me for who I was. Mm. So wait, 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 your mother and father were at the same table, you, like when you came out to that? Like, yes, really they were. We together? were at a restaurant together. However, my parents are not together. Okay, okay. Yeah, and sorry. at the time that I was dating this girl, and at the time that I did came out, my parents haven't been together. They haven't been together since my freshman year in high school. Okay. All so right. this whole time my parents have been divorced. So why were they at a just tangent? But why were they at a restaurant? Did you ask them to I asked them be, to join oh, me. Oh, wow. Yes. My, you set it up. So my thing okay. is like I'm Good. very fortunate Good. in the mm-hmm. divorce aspect of life. Um, my parents are very civil with everything. It was a very civil divorce. There was no argument with custody. We went to they moved my mom moved 6 blocks away from my dad just so she could stay close to us. So one week we were at my dad's, next week we were at my mom's. There was no arguments about six money. Six blocks, that's six nice. Blocks. Six blocks, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. But it was so civil Beautiful. to where I could ask them to meet me together and there would be no issues. Okay. There was not going to be any hostility. Okay. Everything was going to be fine. They just realized that they weren't meant to be. Okay. So So at the time, so we'll go back to the subject. Uh, you were at a table, you had both of them. How right. did they react to it? I think... 
my mom, like my mom knew. My mom is my best friend to this day. So my mom okay. knew. I think she she knew for a long time. I think she was just waiting for me to say the words myself. She didn't want to put any in my mouth. So I really, I, I love and respect her for doing that. Um, my dad, though, seemed kind of surprised. <laughs> he just, but in denial, like in a denial surprise. And I remember when I broke up with my first girlfriend. And I had lunch with him one day. And I had told him, like, yeah, you know, I, I've started talking to this new girl. And, like, she's super nice. Um, and I started telling him a, him a little bit about her. And he was like, wait, you're talking to a girl? And I said, yeah. And he was like, not a guy? And, I, and that was the first time I said to him, you know, Dad, I'm I'm gay. Yeah. yeah. I'm gay. I like females. Not I, just that one. There's no, not <laughs> just the one that I was with. I like multiple, multiple females. Multiple of them. <laughs> multiple of them. I can't. No, I understand. I mean, yeah, that. so... I mean, it took, I granted, it took my dad a couple of years to catch on to it and yeah. just to accept it. But to yeah. this day, like, I'm accepted in my family for who I am. Um, <laughs> I talked to my sister about outing me the first time about a year ago. And she's like, I don't remember that. And I was like, it's okay. She was like, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, for, I forgive you. Like, you know, like, you didn't know what you were doing. You were just as surprised to see me kissing a girl as I would have been if I walked into your room kissing a girl. So, That's true. That's so true. like, you know, I, I can't, I can't blame her. She's a little sister and, you know, I, I still love her the same. And then my, my, um, middle sister, she, for the, she actually bought me cologne for Christmas this year. She fully accepted me for who I am. You got cologne for And Christmas. that is the first Beautiful. time anyone in my family has bought me cologne. Yeah. The first time that that I ever got any type of men's clothing from anyone. Like, right. I remember it being a huge deal. Like, that was that I was cried. Huge. I, I, oh, and I'm not, so a, I don't cry. I don't, I don't <laughs> cry at emotional things, but oh, I, I cried, and I gave her the she, biggest yeah. hug. So, oh. I'm just, I'm super lucky to be accepted, accepted by my family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's not the case for everybody out yeah. there. Yeah. So. Understood. Yeah, and that's that's another reason why we're here, guys, because we can be that safe person that y'all yeah. come out to. If no one accepts you, we will. I that's you. it. That's it. Yeah. You know, we're here for you guys. So so, uh, so after you came out and everything, you know, was on the table, did you have, like, me, did you have a, a rebel, like, moment? Or did you just, you know, you stayed the same? I think, I think that was when I, I moved out. Okay. After my sister had outed so me, the, you're, and you're I just be an kind adult. of packed up my bags okay. I was like you know what I don't I don't want to face this and I ran from my problems Ooh. that's exactly what I did and run from her problems I it sounds am, like there was other things yeah well I, so I gotta admit I was in yeah. I was in a pretty toxic relationship at mm -hmm. the time so there was other influences in my mind when I did made those decisions but you know in all honesty it's who I am today and I'm fine with who I am today so if anything I'm more than happy with who I am today. Cheers, bro. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so, I guess the the big accumulation now is how are, obviously, things now are better because you got cologne. Oh, yeah. Um, your father bought Issa. Okay. So, are we yeah. okay with saying Issa? Just throwing that out there? We're still figuring out how to do names. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. So, yeah, no. Um, so, obviously, everything's much better than it was before. So, okay, from when you came out to now, which I feel like it's a major, if people are buying you cologne and your father bought a present, it's a huge difference. This is the first year, this, I came out, what, when I was, I think 19, 19 okay. to everyone around me in my family, okay, so. um, and I turned 23 this year. This wow. is the first year since then that I have not received perfume for Christmas. Hey, look at you. Well, they saw the hair. It, I mean, I mean, I guess it took <laughs> shaving my head. Did you wear a bow tie or anything? Did no, you but I regular, put to Christmas know, with just... my uh, my dad's uh, fiance or my dad's uh, wife's um, family. Um, I wore I wore some khaki pants or not some khaki pants, but some nice men's shorts, okay. and I wore a button up. And I wore my, I uh, sure wore my Vans, you know. Hey. Yep, yep. I, I left the hat at home because I was like, it's Christmas, you know. Don't need to wear a hat. But yeah, I walked in there, and it was funny because this is the I cut my, I cut my hair um, all the way off. I was down to my shoulders for a while, but I cut it all the way off just this summer. 
So this is the first time that my extended step family has seen me like this. And it was funny to watch people do double takes because a lot of people didn't recognize me at first. And I've had a lot of people that I've known in the past run into me and not recognize me as well. So it's a little bit different. Of course. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Again, you go from femme to, to butch. It's, it's definitely a game changer. That took yeah. me a while as well. I used to, I used to do this tight, you know, it looked like someone painted jeans on my right on my legs. Right. So uncomfortable and for, the big for what? Hoop earrings yeah. and yeah. So I, I mean, I will say I never, I never bought like uh, Uggs or never heels Uggs. or I I, nope. Either. I didn't do those. A uh, Toms. Never, never no, owned a pair of those. No, I was, I have always been broke, so <laughs> <laughs> I never it was fashion. The, That's the most fair. I had was some Kohl's brand because my mother worked at Kohl's and got a discount so that's right what, I mean know, hey, that's how I, I'm not sure tra- I got yeah. majority but of my hey, Christmas gifts that I received this year are from Kohl's hey really go Kohl's. I don't know. yeah go Kohl's we're not sponsored but maybe we should be <laughs> hey um, <laughs> but uh yeah no obviously I mean my parents are good too they 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 love my fiance. We are getting married in May. I mean everything. My uh, what what makes it even weirder is my. This is the first time, as far as a relationship a relationship goes, where my my partner's parents and my parents get along. Really? Oh yeah, like too much along. Like they now party together. It's not. It's 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 odd. It's weird. <laughs> You know what, I can, for me personally, this is the first relationship that I've been in with a female where my parents like her. Oh, good. Yeah, I have to, I have mean, to remind you guys, my, my first relationship was not, was not good. It was, it was toxic and it was, it was not okay. So my parents obviously were not a fan of that. They, they saw it from afar where I couldn't see it. So I just thought that they were mad that I was with a girl. Of course. Of but course. that wasn't the case. They were mad about the girl that I was with. Yeah. So, or not um, really even the girl you're with, just the relationship you guys that's had, it. Yeah. right? Yeah, so the situation like of it, yeah. really. Yeah. So now being in my official second re- lesbian relationship, I have, <clears throat> you know, I've talked to girls here and there, but I've never officially been in a relationship other than with um, the wonderful, beautiful girl that I'm with right now. Hey, I yeah, hope you she... don't hate her in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I could never, I could never. No, she's amazing. Um, yeah, but our um... podcast. <laughs> 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 Woo, that'd be rough to come back and watch this. <laughs> it's okay. No, I'm kidding, babe. I love you. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is the first relationship where my parents openly invite her to things where I asked my mom, like, Hey mom, can, uh, can she join us for Christmas this year? And my mom was like, duh, what kind of a question is that? Like that, I've never been in an accepting relationship with my family. So that is a whole new, it's a whole new world for me. And it is exciting. It's so, it's so amazing. Big steps, big steps. I remember the first time that that happened to me. I mean, it was with my first girl who uh, they, they thought I turned her wasn't that way at all I <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, it was, it was, it was opposite. actually very much the opposite um but either way i mean that turning point was huge and right. I, I remember that it's right. very yeah again uh, world off your shoulder is how it feels <laughs> amazing yeah. amazingly lift uh weights off your shoulders but, uh, so i mean uh that brings us to our next point guys like uh, we we told you are coming out stories so um so we, we want to give you a little bit of help for Maybe how you guys can come out, you know, uh, I like we we expressed multiple times how hard it is to come out, you know. Yeah, so um, I get it. Yeah, no. So here's a little here's a couple of pointers for you guys, actually, from what we've experienced personally. So how to come out, guys. Uh, step one, first, before anything, make sure you have a safe environment. Uh, safe environment is very important. So, I mean, I, it, to each his own, if you if you succeeded at it, then go you. But I would suggest not doing it at a family event of some sort. Like we just got through the holidays. It's a it's a stereotype in lesbian culture to come out on Thanksgiving. You don't need to do that. Really, you come out on your own time. You make it your own day. You you sit whoever you want with right. you. Make make sure you make sure you have somewhere to go home to as well. Um, so if you don't th- if you think it's going to be a violent environment at home. I would make sure you have other arrangements. Just make sure you have a safe place in order to, 
to obviously have that big emotional talk. Right, like somewhere where you feel comfortable. Like this is this is your coming out story. This is you being you. So you should decide where and when that happens. And no one else can tell you different. Don't let anyone force you into a situation that you don't want to do. So uh, same. So, so that brings us to step number two. Step two, have a support system. Support systems are very crucial. I mean, this could be anywhere from a uh, best friend, if you're not out to anybody that you go to school with, there may be someone who is close to you, your peers, a teacher, a, uh, a mentor of a some counselor. sort. A counselor, yeah, no, a counselor, uh, someone else, you know, a neighbor, any, anyone. Just make sure you have some someone to go back to. Uh, I mean, literally, m- me, whenever I came out, I had my best friend. I had someone who, my ride or die, she would do anything for me. I love her. Have a best friend or have someone that you're going to be able to um, call. At least a phone call. As simple as a phone call. Right. Or a text afterwards. Hey, I did it. I'm out. Can I stay over and cry into your pillow? <laughs> Like, those are totally fine. <laughs> and it is okay to cry, too, <laughs> yes. especially if you're happy and crying. It's just a release of emotion. It sure is. So, and that is a very emotional thing to do, to come out. So, oh. yeah, no, I, I know I cried like a baby whenever everything was said and done. So Very yeah. much so. Y'all don't, y'all yeah. don't feel bad. A lot of tears. Um, and then the, I suppose the next one is uh, don't feel pressured by anybody to come out. Including gay community, too. There's so many gay members that feel like they need to uh, have other people come out with them. No. That's not how that works. Everyone I mean, you may, even be, you may even be in a same-sex relationship oh, at yeah. the time, and your yeah. partner is saying, I won't be with you unless you come out. That is not their place to say it. And it, it's unfortunate that someone would want to put you in that situation and manipulate you in that kind of way. But it swings back to our first step in a safe environment. It is some, If someone is pressuring you to do something, you're not going to feel safe doing it. So definitely don't feel pressured, guys. Like, yeah. You do this on your own time, your own timetable. It's your life. I don't care if you're, uh, your significant other says that they, they need to come out, so you have to, too. That's not true. Or even um, if it's your best friend saying that, mm-hmm. or maybe you, you told, you know, if, if there is ever, ever some unethical counselor out there, or a teacher who tells you that you need to come out to your parents, that this is, this is something that needs to happen, that you don't need to be talking to them about it, don't listen to them. It is not their place to tell you what to do with your life. Like, you know, back to, back to it. Just yeah. don't let anyone feel, make you feel pressured yes. to do it. That is and, the basis of it. And while I do think that everyone should come out at some point, because obviously the more we are out and proud and, and happy with who we are, the more that we're going to show other people that it's okay. Um, with that being said, it, that aside, you have your own timetable. If you come out at 50 versus coming out at 18 and that's that makes you happy, that makes you happy. Makes you happy. You are you, and that's what we're here to express, y'all. Exactly. So brings us to point four. Don't feel ashamed. Yeah, so being out, you're gay. So what? You like people of the same sex. So what? I the world's not you, ending. Yeah, yeah, I promise you, as someone who's been out and proud for over 10 years, it doesn't affect anybody else. No one has died because I decided to, uh, I can't say, I decided to kiss females for <laughs> a living. I was going to, yeah, I was going to go dirty, but it's fine. I corrected myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to cut that one. <laughs> fine. But anyway, uh. um, yeah, no, again, don't feel ashamed. You are who you are. It's, there's more than just you out here. There's a whole big culture of us. Um, obviously, if you feel like you're alone, you have us. Um, if you don't right. have anyone else, you have you us. You have us. Yeah. So, you have us, I mean, guys. Again, we have a, we have an email address that we're going to put down in our description that is completely anonymous. It is only read by me and Denise. No one else will ever see what you guys send to us. And I promise if you guys can't trust anyone, you can trust us. Because we've been through it. And then don't feel ashamed because we talked about how hard it is to just come out in general. Just to say those words. Just to say the words, right. And that's shame right there. That's shame. But not being able to say the words lesbian, that's shame. Not being able to say the words butch. Like, I remember butch was the hardest one for me. Really? It took took a while. 
Um, Because I was okay with saying tomboy. Yeah, no, I'm a tomboy. (laughs) That was me. I had a sweatshirt that said tomboy. Tomboy. And my mom got it for me. She knew. (laughs) Hat somewhere. It says tomboy. But yeah, no, big, big, yeah. That was my, 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 what what is it? Euphemism? Euphemism, Euphemism? whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, But no, but but don't just felt bad in my mouth. Again, don't, that was shame. Don't feel shame. (laughs) You know, it's funny. To this day, like, people will yell butch at me as an insult and I kind of just laugh because I'm like I classify myself as a butch that's how I get the ladies you're you're telling me (laughs) what I already am I don't understand why that's bad it's like yelling at me you're a person okay like (laughs) all right yes sir. yeah but like we we you know you took so long to say those words so why feel bad about saying them all that negativity and all that pressure that you had built up to actually saying these things why still continue to feel bad after saying it? You did it. You completed what it takes years, sometimes years, to come up with or to say, like, you guys, you did it. You did it. So why feel bad about it? Yeah. yeah. Again, guys, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Absolutely nothing wrong. You are, you, you grew up the way you were supposed to. I mean, this is, this is your life. You get to decide how you live it. So be happy, please. So don't don't think that there's anything wrong with you just because you're a female who likes females or you're a man who likes men or you're you're you grew up in the wrong body. There's absolutely nothing wrong nothing with you. wrong with you yeah. whatsoever. So, I mean, and trust me, I know someone who, as someone who went through those struggles and and it sucked feeling like I was the only one. I was for the longest time I was the only one in my friends group who was gay. Like I didn't have a friend out there that you know had been out. Ironically, a lot of my friends in my original friends group ended up being gay. <laughs> so if just one right. of us had came out, I'm sure the rest of us would have just, just followed line. Yeah. Yeah. And but it, no I mean, that, that brings brave. us to number five too, yeah. is you're not alone with it. Like you just said, like if one person were to come out, it just gives everyone else the courage to do it themselves. And I think that's what's great about Pride Month and just pride in general is like you that's see other... Pride Month. Yeah. <laughs> you see how other people are able to be themselves and it just makes you want to be you as well so you're not alone out there guys there are so many of us that went through the same thing are going through the same thing currently or have yet to go through the same thing and you're you're not alone in this if anything um we are gonna down in our um description description we are going to post uh different hotlines that you guys can use different um websites different phone numbers um like i said you guys can email us we can be a support system for you guys um but you're not alone in this i promise you're not all resources down below yeah. all down below yeah. but no um literally again there's this is why we're creating this channel we want we want to create a space where you don't feel alone where and we're here if we're not here the community's here i'm hoping to have a community hopefully we'll get that cool if not, no worries. I mean, if anything, there is still the LGBT community That's out right. there. That's so right. Again, we all we all stand we all stand proud. We all stand strong together. So So yeah, speaking of not being alone, guys, we're gonna be here every Thursday posting for you guys. Um, um we'll be answering emails and comments daily. You know, I think everyone knows that everyone's on their phone nowadays, hey. constantly. So we're always here for you guys. Y'all don't be afraid to reach out to us. If you uh, like the value that we provided to this channel, please, 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 please like, subscribe, and uh, comment. If anything, comment your stories down below. We we shared our out stories. So please share. I'd like to hear yours. With us. Yeah. And please. if you don't if you don't feel comfortable leaving it down in the comment section, we will also include our email down below. It is actually borngaypodcast at gmail.com. If you guys want to send us your stories anonymously and we would love to share them with other viewers so that they may know that they are not alone as well. That's borngaypodcast at gmail.com, please. Yeah. Oh, I'll also post that down in the description. Make sure that you guys have access to that along with all the resources down below. So, um, yeah, if, uh, if nothing else. All right, guys, so that wraps it up. I mean, that's our first episode, episode one, done in whoop, the whoop. books. I hope you like it. We'll so, see yeah. y'all next week, yeah. next Thursday. I'm Denise. And I'm Lindsay, and we're born this gay.